Hello there, I'm Alex. This is Sinspiration, the only place where I inspire you to develop a growth mindset. If you haven't checked out my new I'm Inspired series, be sure to do so as the guests that I have interviewed provide realistic expectations and insightful stories that can help you to pursue your career paths and passions. If you've watched it or have already been sharing the videos amongst your friends, especially Vincent and Margaret, thank you for being a part of the Sinspiration community. One topic that came up in episode one when I interviewed a software engineering manager is the ridiculous compensation ranges. The reality is that a majority of compensation packages actually consist of stock. And you can agree or disagree, but what makes one person rich is what someone owns. Stock is a quantifiable measure of how much you own a company. It is what makes the wealthy ultra rich. And there is no reason why you shouldn't be a part of that growth. In this video, I will talk about three ways that you can acquire stock at your job. Restricted stock units, incentive stock options, and employee stock purchase programs. Restricted stock units, or RSUs, are a specified number of shares that you get. This typically applies to publicly traded companies. Typically, you would get a grant of a set number of shares or a dollar amount and it is vested over a schedule, usually four years. For the dollar amount, it uses the fair market value of the stock price on a certain date or a certain time frame. The grant value is divided by the stock price to determine the number of shares you will get over the course of this grant. Although you cannot control the stock price, ideally you will want to hope for a low grant price so you get more shares and then you vest at a higher price, so you get more money out of it. You will also have a higher cost basis, which means you will have to pay less taxes when you sell the stock. If you're fortunate, you'll get stock refreshers, typically annually. So after four years, you'll reach what I call steady state, where you will be vesting from four different stock grants at a time. This is one advantage for staying at a job for longer rather than job hopping. You can actually make a lot more money from your stock compensation if the stock price does well. One misconception about compensation in tech is how the stock grants are counted toward annual compensation. It is not supposed to be how much the grants are worth. It is supposed to be how much one vests. For example, if someone makes $80,000 a year and has a stock grant of $40,000 vested over four years, the annual compensation is 90K, not 120K, because in that stock grant, you only vest $10,000 per year. I think some companies and a lot of people just add the entire stock grant and say that's their total compensation. While technically correct, a lot of jobs out there talk about the annual compensation. So we need to compare apples to apples here. And so when people add the stock grants like this, there's a lot of misconceptions about you know, how much say software engineers actually make per year. And so remember, it's not how much the stock grants are worth, it's how much one vests per year. Now, of course, you'll have to factor in the stock price in your calculations. You'll also need to know the exact number of shares that you will be vesting in a year. Now, if your stock price goes higher than your grant price, then you'll have a higher annual compensation as well. When you vest, it is advisable to withhold shares for taxes. When you do this, the cost basis will actually be at the stock price of when you vest them, not zero dollars. So when you do your taxes, make sure to ensure that a correct or adjusted cost basis is entered. Otherwise, you'll be paying extra taxes on money that you've already paid taxes on. And nobody wants to pay extra taxes. If you leave the company, you will forfeit all invested stock. If you retire with the company, you might get an accelerated vesting schedule. Incentive stock options, or ISOs, are the rights to purchase a stock at a certain 
price. Usually only startups and non-publicly traded companies offer these as part of compensation, unless you are a top level executive. Similar to RSUs, you are subject to a vesting schedule. There are two main differences. The first is you have to exercise your options within a 10 year time frame after which they expire. The second is what's called the bargain element. And this enables you to exercise your options at a stock price that is lower than the current market value of the stock. This will give you an immediate profit as soon as you exercise your options. For example, if you exercise 1,000 options at $2 a share and the current market value is $5 a share, then your $2,000 investment is instantly worth $5,000. Seems too good to be true, right? Well, yes, you have to pay Uncle Sam if you sell your shares. If you sell at least two years after the grant date and one year after your options are exercised, then this is what's called a qualifying disposition. This means you will only have to pay long-term capital gains tax. There is no short-term gains tax here because you've held the stock for at least a year. Otherwise, you will be selling your stock as a disqualifying disposition. You will not only have to pay long-term or short-term capital gains tax, but also you have to report that bargain element as earned income. So in our example, you would take $5 minus $2, which is $3 a share times 1,000 shares, which is $3,000. And this $3,000 will count as earned income and is taxable. One warning about ISOs. If your company or startup does not IPO, your shares are not worth anything, meaning you cannot cash them out. You may have to work at this company or startup for many years, and only if it IPOs, and the stock price does well, will you be able to make a huge profit from your stock options. If you recently joined, you may not have vested a lot of stock options to work with. And finally, the post IPO stock price can fall significantly before you are able to exercise your options or sell the stock. It's a hit or miss. Just like RSUs, you will forfeit all unvested stock options if you leave the company. But it might be a good idea to hold on to this equity because you never know what's gonna happen in the future. The third method of acquiring stock at your company is called the Employee Stock Purchase Program, or ESPP. What this does is it allows you to purchase the company's stock at a discount, typically 15%, two times a year. And most publicly traded companies offer this. You have to subscribe to the ESPP one month before the six month offering period. Then during this offering period, you contribute about two to 15% of your salary and maybe bonuses so you can purchase stock at the end. And when that happens, it will take the lower price of the beginning and the end of the offering period, and you get a 15% of discount off of that. Now, every company is different. They might have different compensation limits, and they might have different ways of setting the stock prices to use. 15% off the lower stock price that's quite good. Let's say the stock price was $120 at the beginning and $100 at the end. So you would take 15% off of the $100. So that's $85 a share. And so if the current stock price is $100, then you've instantly made 17.6%. And it's a little higher than 15% because you made $15 using only $85. So let's say the stock price was actually $120 today and $100 at the beginning. You would still purchase 15% off of the $100, so $85 a share, but now the stock price is worth $120. That means you'll be making $35 per share. And so in general, it is good if your stock price goes up 
during the offering period. Additionally, no fractional shares are given. Any money that's not able to purchase an additional share are refunded to you in your next paycheck. So companies with lower or smaller dollar amounts for their stock prices are better. So you can actually take full advantage of ESPP. You won't be getting any shares for Berkshire Hathaway Class A. All right, Alex, what's the catch? Taxes again. Just like ISOs, you have to hold the stock for at least one year after the purchase date and two years after the grant date for it to be a qualifying disposition. Why do you want it to be a qualifying disposition? So you don't have to pay earned income tax on the 15% discount you got. And even more if your stock price went up during the offering period. One more thing about ESPP is that the IRS limits each individual to purchase up to $25,000 worth of stock in a calendar year through ESPP. This is based on the fair market value of the stock price, not the discounted stock price. And so this will limit the number of shares that you can purchase in a year. To get the max benefit from ESPP, contribute $21,250. Any excess will be refunded to you. My main motivation for creating this video is I wanted to shed some light on how stock compensation and purchase programs actually work. But also I wanted to clear up the misconception about how stock compensation should be counted. We should be using annual compensation because that is how most of the jobs out there do it. And a lot of jobs out there also don't have a stock component to it. So we need to compare apples to apples. Remember, it's not how much stock you are granted per year, it's how much you vest per year. In some cases, stock is the path to wealth rather than salary. Don't underestimate it. Take calculated risks because stock prices are unpredictable. If you like this video, hit that like button and blow up my comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos and check out my page for more content on how to grow your mindset. You've been inspired today. I love owning stocks, especially assets that appreciate. Trade wisely.